Hello, uh, my name is David Martin. I'm one of the consultant radiologists working here in Morriston and Singleton Hospital. Um, I just want to talk you through our in, a bit of induction about the departments and then also cover a bit about regulations of uh, radiation protection. So what I'll be covering today is a combination of how you get access to your radiology um, account so you can view images when you're on the wards, a bit about our request forms in uh, the different departments of radiology, um, also about how we want you to request things during hours and then out of hours, uh, also a few top tips which were recommended in the BMJ a couple of years ago by a doctor who's worked in radiology and in general practice, and then also some IRMA requirements and referral responsibilities and the IRMA guidelines are the ionizing radiation medical exposure regulations which we have to adhere to so i'll explain that a bit more so first of all how do you get access to your own account into signups which is our pax system so literally you just go on to the intranet after you've logged on to a computer look along the cross across the top of that uh, on the first page of the internet and there should be um, things in clinical systems and then you go down to where it says fuji and then look, click on the I want access to uh, tab and then you'll just fill in a form and then you should be able to get access to your own account. Here's a shot of our uh, request forms for general x-rays, for ultrasounds and for CT scans. So the bottom half of the x-ray form you don't really need to worry about because that's for radiology use. I'll just draw your attention to the, the top half of the x-ray form which is a bit you'll be filling in. Uh, in particular what I would like to uh, draw attention to is the bits where it shows you where the uh, patient is located so we often don't get this filled in correctly patients in a in different place to what's filled in so we need to get that made sure that we know where the patient is um, who they're under and then at the bottom of the, that bit of this section uh, just draw your attention to where you put your name and sign the form because it's very important that you put your name clearly and an extension number or bleep number, particularly uh, useful when we find an unexpected finding that we need to tell you about. If you're going off shift after handing in your form, it might be useful actually to put a second bleep number down of someone who might be looking after the patient in the daytime so we can get a hold of them at that time as well. Okay. The next form is our MRI form. This is a completely separate form and needs to be used for all MRI investigations that you're requesting. So it's a different form. Um, it still has the, the bits about where the patient is and your name and everything like that. So you need to make sure you fill those in. But also at the bottom of the form, there's a very important bit about the, your declaration to say the patient's safe to go into the um, magnetic scanner. So you need to go through these safety questions with the patient and make sure you've ticked them. If, if this is not completed, then we won't be able to perform the test and we'll be sending the form back to you for a completion. This includes inpatients and outpatients. Okay, so make sure you've filled that, that important bit in. Okay. So going on to requesting scans in hours. So first of all, I'll start in Morriston. So here we run a duty system. So there'll be a duty general radiologist on for the day. They'll cover all CT body requests and also other imaging requests. They may not be able to actually um, authorize all of them, but they'll be able to tell you potentially where to go to as some of the requests that you'll be uh, making will be subspecialty requests. But everything basically goes through the duty radiologists. This is apart from nine to five, we have a consultant neuroradiologist on call. So if anything, CT heads, MRI heads, or MRI spines, I should go straight to the neuroradiologist for consideration. Okay, um, ultrasounds, there should be an ultrasound coordinator of the day, usually one of our superintendent sonographers. Um, there's usually a consultant doing a list at least once a day, um, if there's any complex queries that the ultrasonographers uh, and the coordinators can't deal with, they'll send you either to that person covering the list or they'll send you to the duty radiologist if there's no one covering ultrasound consultant-wise. From September, we're hoping to 
set up a musculoskeletal radiologist rotor, which means that every day there should be a musculoskeletal specialist radiologist on site nine to five to be able to um, field your queries about musculoskeletal radiology so you won't have to go through the duty radiologist but that's in process it hasn't started yet okay things work slightly differently in singleton so there's no named duty radiologist but each uh, morning and afternoon ct list should be covered by a consultant um, ultrasound doesn't always have consultant cover every day or every session so a lot of it is covered by our sonographers but there will be consultants in Singleton every day between nine and five for discussion. So it's always best to either check at the main reception desk or the ultrasound and CT reception desk, which is located in the ultrasound department to find out who's covering which lists. Now, if you've got a request that isn't particularly urgent, could be done over the next few days, then you can just drop the request in, it will be done um, if we feel it's, it's valid. If we need to discuss it with you, as long as you've correctly put your contact details, we'll be able to discuss any queries we've got with you. If you think it's urgent for that day, then you must come down and discuss it with the person who's going to be either doing the ultrasound scan or doing the, the CT scan that day. So get it authorised for that day. Don't expect it to be done just if you drop it in, um, particularly if it's a complex case as well. And also any intervention, either that be in Singleton or Morriston, so any biopsies any drainages need to be discussed with a consultant radiologist to decide is the patient appropriate for that, is, are they uh, fit for it and what other considerations we need to take into account. And if you are going to have a biopsy or a drainage request that has to come directly from uh, a consultant decision on the ward and then the form brought down after the consultant has decided that. In Singleton, there is no separate neuro radiologist on, so the neuro CT re request will be covered by the general radiologist on site. If it is an MRI request or an MRI spine, then you'll have to then speak to the neuro radiologist who's covering from Morriston, but that will be available on the, the general desk. Okay. So on call, so out of hours, past five o'clock and on weekends, there's a radiologist, the duty radiologist who was covering the day in Morriston then covers both sites, Singleton and Morriston, and all calls, including CT heads, will go through that person. Um, the MRI request for neuroradiology and the MRI spines will still go through an on-call neuroradiologist uh, who will be contactable via switchboard. Usually the radiologist on call and duty in Morriston is still present in Morriston past five o'clock, but phone switchboard first to find out where they are. Um, they'll either be on site or available on the phone. Um, and we'll always, uh, we will now have registrars on call with us. So you may be put through to the registrar first. Out of hours, we would request that all requests come from an ST3 level or above. And this is after discussion with the consultant before ringing us to request the scan. There are some exceptions to this, such as if there was a, a major trauma, um, then we may accept, obviously, from the ST3 uh, registrar if they've been seeing the patient in a &E for for instance, um, and we need an urgent scan. But in general, we would want the ST3 or above to ring us directly after the case had been discussed with the consultant. Um, on weekends, we uh, residents on in Morriston from 11 till 3, but often we're here beyond that. But uh, 11 till 3 will definitely be in Morriston. And if after that hours, you can ring the switchboard and find out whether we're still here, whether we're uh, at home and you can ring us um, via switchboard. So after 11 o'clock, the CT heads are being covered by an outsource company. So you'll still ring up to request them, but you will speak to the outsource company for the CT head requests, and they have a list of indications which we've given them what we're happy to, for them to accept overnight. If there's a trauma or a thrombolysis potential, then those can go directly to our radiographer via switchboard. But 
again, referrals have to come from the medical registrar for thrombolysis or a consultant. Okay. So here we've just got a list of top tips for requesting radiology investigations. Uh, these were written by a doctor who's got um, experience in radiology and also general practice, so he knows both sides of the coin. Um, number one, the, the very top tip is to know your patients before you come down. Uh, a recent audit we did in Morriston said only up to 71% of requests actually had adequate clinical information. So I'll go into why that's important in a minute with the IRMA regulations. So ask a question, because that's much more easy for us to answer a question rather than just stating a, a number of symptoms that the patient has. Uh, remember you're requesting and not ordering the investigation. Uh, structure your request nicely so we can see the ordered nature of what you're thinking as well. Um, if we haven't had a chance to talk to you personally, that might be vital in how we interpret the scan. Um, quite importantly, put, know the patient's creatinine before you come down or their EGFR. If you know this, then we can discuss high creatinines at the time because it's very, it can get complicated if you've already left uh, and there's a high creatinine that needs discussing and then we've got to get back hold of you. Um, and also, not all of us radiologists bite, so we're often very uh, pleasant to everyone coming down and we just all we really want is people to know the patients well so we can have a full discussion and that can also be beneficial for when you come down because we can actually add in some teaching sometimes to to the uh, the case which is always good so this uh, is half of a poster which is on uh, on our radiology departments about the responsibility of the referrers and it's all covered under the ionizing radiation medical exposure regulations, um, which we have to abide by when we're justifying scans. So a lot of it is common sense. I'll just go through the poster uh, bit by bit. So a referral is an exposure which you're, you are going to request. Um, and it's either myself as a radiologist or one of our radiographers have to consider whether what you've requested is justified. So that's where the clinical information comes in and it's vital for us to be able to justify a, an exposure to radiation or one of the other radiology tests that don't involve radiation. So here's what your, is your responsibility as referrers, which um, is, most of it, as I say, is common sense. So it's ensuring you've got the clinical information correct um, for that patient and it's up-to-date clinical information. Make sure you fill out the form correctly as I've stated and also make sure you put the label on the form first before you fill out the, the rest of it because there has been mistakes made where the wrong addressograph is put on the, the wrong form and people have been exposed incorrectly. Uh, make sure that if you've got any doubt about what the best test is or whether a previous test mm -hmm has answered the same question, then please come down and discuss that. Um, also, if you're doing any research, make sure that that's put on the form that this is a research patient. Um, and also make sure that, very importantly, that if we do report something, that you make sure that it's your responsibility to actually read that report and act on it. If there's something that's serious but expected, say if you've put, we, Think this patient might have a perforation we do a ct scan it shows perforation we're not going to necessarily phone you up to tell you about that result you need to keep checking that the when the results coming through and then act on it because it's not an unexpected result if we saw something that was unexpected say you did a ct of the thorax for chest pain and we actually saw that there was a perforation on that that would be an unexpected serious thing that we would need to convey to you and therefore it's our responsibility to get that information to you and then your responsibility to act on it. So that's a very important thing that uh, things are read in a timely fashion and acted upon. But these posters are up in our department if you want to read them. And just uh, not to scare anyone but there is part of this is that our clinical director does have the authority to withdraw referral rights of people if they have sort of repeated failure to comply with things that we've asked you to do. 
And to help you refer, there are access to the Royal College of Radiologists referral guidelines, and you can actually get this online via the iRefer app. So you can either go into it using the website address on the slide here, or you can, if you want to, uh, get the app for your iPhone or Android phone, but it does cost, uh, I think it's something approximately £1.50 uh, if you do want to have it on uh, access to it, or you can just get it for free um, via the website. And that's a very useful guide to help you know which test to, ref to request and what certain situations. The other thing I wanted to draw your attention to is this radiation protection learning tool, which is actually on the intranet. So as part of your induction, you'll be doing some other uh, induction things on the intranet. And this is one of them under the learning and development tab on the intranet banner. Um, so if you go into the first opening page of the intranet, you'll have this banner across the top and then learning development, scroll down to radiation protection and log into that. And it's a useful training tool to look through uh, to help guide you about radiation protection and uh, useful uh, combination between what we've spoken about today and, and this. Okay, so that's all we wanted to inform you about. Number one thing is to know your patients and understand what your responsibilities are as a referrer when you come down to us. And we have to justify the, the test and be able to advise you what the best test is. So that's why you need to know your patients. Use the available learning and guidance, be that the referral guidelines or the radiation protection tools that we've got available. And please uh, sort of stress if there's a complex or urgent patient, please come down to speak to us about it because we can help guide what needs to happen next. And this includes anyone who needs any intervention such as a biopsy or drainage. Uh, make sure you speak to the radiologist directly. Um, and obviously feel free to come down and discuss any any cases which you feel need discussion or clarification of any of the uh, radiology reports as well. Okay, thank you.